Hey guys, welcome to a wig video I've wanted to film for a really long time, so I thought I would just show you how I style my wigs when I first get them. Here's the wig. Uh, she's not the best, but she's also not the worst. There's a lot of potential here. As you can see, it's a little shiny, it's a little scraggly looking and the bangs and stuff. She's got some weird lumps and bumps from shipping, but it's a beautiful color and I can't wait to see how it turns out. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have my assistant here, the lovely Miss Emily. Um, she will be helping us style this wig today. The very first thing I'm going to do is take some scissors and just cut this tag off because we don't need that anymore, duh. And now we're just going to take the wig and place it on the mannequin. Make sure it's on there good, you don't want it slipping and sliding around and all that jazz. And I'm just going to take a comb and begin brushing out the bangs. Now I'm going to section, section them the way they naturally want to fall. Um, there, you're going to have some weird hairs here and there, ones that are way too long. I wouldn't try to force it a certain way too much, just let it go again where it naturally wants to fall because if it, the hair wants to go there, it's pretty much going to go there no matter what. Now of course we're going to fix that with some heat later on, but um, just whatever wants to go to the bangs, just, just let it go there. Also, I want to make a note that uh, if it's easier for you or if you don't have a mannequin head to use, you can cut the bangs while they're on your, your head, like put the wig on and cut them that way. Uh, that might be easier for you. Now, if you're like me and you own a gazillion wigs, I know about where to cut the bangs to make it fall where I want it to fall once it's on my head. So if you have enough experience, you can kind of gauge it. So I have no problem cutting the bangs just on the mannequin. But be careful doing that because most likely your head is not going to be the same size as the mannequin. So you really just want to take that into consideration. Now here, I made that first cut. Got most of the length off. Uh, shoot, I'm not redoing that. I got most of the length off uh, with that first cut. You don't want to cut it too short. You want to start long and then shorten it up as it goes on. Um, and then if you see here, I'm sectioning out two about half inch pieces on the sides. When I cut bangs, I don't want them to be just all the same length straight across. I'm going to take out these side pieces and kind of have them longer than the rest of the bangs to sort of help frame the face. I just feel like it looks a lot nicer, it looks more natural, and it's going to keep the wig from looking quite so wiggy. Don't go dropping the scissors like I did, because uh, that's dangerous. Now here I'm going to start cutting these side bits at an angle and just kind of running the scissors I, I, the words are hard running the scissors in a downward motion and that way uh, when you're cutting a synthetic wig you know it's harder to get the pieces looking more even and less choppy than it would be with human hair uh, it's not going to blend as well so you just kind of want to take it and cut it at an angle here I'm running the scissors upwards to help kind of blend it together. Um, that's called point cutting, if I remember. Beauty school dropped out. Shout out to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just kind of sitting here doing the same thing, just back and forth. Um, and then there's about where we want it. So it has those longer bits on the sides. Uh, the bangs look very, um, I don't know, what do you call it? They're not going to be straight across. And now I'm just going to take this flat iron and run it through the bangs. Now it is going to make the bangs look more like weirdly flat and straight, but we're going to fix that later. Um, you could also, at the end of this, if you wanted to, you could take like a, like a hot roller or something and bump the bangs back up so they're not just so flat to your forehead. But for now I'm running the flat iron through because we want to make sure that all the bits of hair are you know, even and like meshing well. We don't have any random long pieces. So without straightening the bangs, it would be kind of hard to make sure everything's even. So that's that's why I did that. Even though it looks worse, we're gonna make it look better. Don't you worry a little pretty head about it, okay? Okay. So 
So if you notice there, I cut the bangs across so that all the hairs are even, and then I start taking the scissors upwards in that point cutting motion again. And uh, that's going to help give a more choppy appearance to the bangs. Uh, so that way they're not perfectly plastic straight across looking like some kind of weird Barbie hair. You want to give some variation in the lengths of the hairs to make it look more like hair. Um, obviously not to the extremity that your bangs look all fucked up and like you, you don't know how to use a pair of scissors. That might be the case. You do you. I'm not here to judge. I'm just a disembodied voice on a video, okay? You don't have to do anything I say. But, um, this, this just makes it look better. Okay, moving on. This entire process should take you approximately three to seven business days. Are you bored? I'm bored. Let's speed it up. I mean, you could have sped it up a little bit more than that, but I mean, alright. You do you. Welcome to the world of hyper fixations. It takes me three weeks to do one load of laundry, but a wig? I'll sit here and do that for six hours. That's fine. Okay, once I'm mostly happy with the bangs, we're gonna pop that off the mannequin head and I'm just adjusting the straps to where it'll fit my head. And we're just gonna throw this bad boy on and see about where we're at. Uh, sometimes I have to adjust the bangs once it's on my head just to make sure, you know, once again, the, the mannequin's not the same size as me. So I wanna make sure the bangs fall exactly where I need them to. And I did a really good job this time around. I, I guess filming really helped knowing I had an audience. I really didn't want to screw up. So yeah, that looks nice. This is actually um, fairly close to what my hair used to be before I started cutting and dyeing it. Um, okay, now we're going to take care of this lumpiness at the top. Uh, if you have a hot comb, it would be ideal. And also uh, this bottle I'm using it says it's like Aussie leave-in conditioner, but it's not. It's actually water and fabric softener. So fabric softener with synthetic wigs, this is going to be like your leave-in conditioner. Um, I always put it in new wigs because uh, it's going to make it smell nice. The fabric softener is going to again condition the wig. It's also going to help mattify the wig and it's going to remove a lot of the static because new wigs are generally very staticky. So it's like a one-stop shop for pretty much any wig problems you're having and then um, take this what's this called a curling wand and I'm just gonna use that to flatten out the top if you have a hot comb that is ideal but I don't have one of those so a curling wand or a curling iron will do just fine you don't want to use a flat iron because obviously for a flat iron to work unless yours gets really fucking hot on the outside um, you're not just gonna be able to run it on the top like that you know what I mean? Like, we're not sticking hair inside of something. We're just flattening the wig down. So, uh, yeah. Curling wand. Okay. Good stuff. Good talk. You get it? You get it. You're doing great. I'm so proud of you. Now, our next plan of action is to deal with this. There are so many tracks showing. The wig looks so thin at the top, so... Uh, the easiest way to fix that is we're just going to tease the hell out of it. So I'm going to start by taking my teasing comb I have here and I'm just going to separate out this very topmost section because the wig has plenty of volume throughout and I don't want it to be like a super teased wig. So we really just need to make this top section look thicker. So you can kind of gauge, um, this one is a skin top part. So 
I just part it around where the skin top ends, if that makes sense. If you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's You'll, you'll, you'll get it. <laughs> so, just this very top section. I'm just going to go all the way around and uh, brush that out so it doesn't get all tingly. Alright. Come on. Okay. And then now we're just going to clip it. Stick a, stick a little clip in it. Yeah, there we go. Now, I don't want to take this whole section and tease it. I want to work in small sections so that you can really make the wig thicken up. So I'm going to pull out about, uh, I'd say, inch wide sections from this one big section I made. And uh, just work at it slowly. Um, so just going right at the root, I'm not going to go more than two inches down the length of the hair because again, we don't need to tease all the way to the ends. That's not what we're doing here. If you want to see more of that, that's the first video on this channel. That's that's not what this is. Uh, so again, focusing primarily on the root because we just want to make sure that no tracks are showing when I move. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's a common occurrence with cheaper wigs is just towards the top, especially in the back. Um, it's it's going to be thinner. So once I got that teased, I'm just going to blast it with some hairspray. Uh, wig hairspray is a scam. You can use literally what it or whatever hairspray you want. It's, it's all going to work the same. It's not going to damage the wig. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Also, only tease from the underside of the section you're working on. Do not tease it on the top. Uh, because that's going to make the top of the wig look weird and frizzy and that's that's not what you want. Unless it is what you want, again, I don't judge. I leave that up to Jesus. Are you getting sick of this song yet? Cause like, me too. So now I'm getting a different brush. This one has like those kind of bristles. I don't know what you call it, but you know what I mean. You can, you can see it. Uh, and I'm gonna use this to brush out the top and smooth it down. Uh, these kind of bristles are just going to be better for that. I feel like if you use any other kind of brush or you try to use a comb or something, it's going to take out a lot of the tees that we just put in there. And I don't want that. I just want to smooth it down. So these kind of bristly brushes are, are optimal for that. They're also good for teasing, but um, I used a comb on purpose because, again, we don't want like a big tease. And then, yeah, yeah just, just, just do what I say. Trust me. I, I know what I'm talking about. And finish that off with a big blast of hairspray all around so that it stays where you put it. Yeah, look how much better she looks. Now to take care of that weird flatness we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to tease the roots of the bangs. Again, so they're not so stuck to my forehead. And, uh, you know, later on I'll, I'll do the hot roller thing. Stick a hot roller in it and have the bangs more, like, curled. Uh, but for now, I had somewhere to be <laughs> during the filming of this video. So, uh, teasing is fine. And uh, now I'm going to take some dry shampoo. This is what every amateur wig owner swears by. It will help mattify the wig, take out the shine, all that good stuff. But um, 
fabric softener still will pretty much do that. I'm just using dry shampoo on the ends. I did the fabric softener at the top um, because we're you'll see what we're doing later. So now I'm taking some concealer on a flat brush and I'm just gonna pop it in the part because again this is a skin top wig but uh, the, the, the skin is, is a little bit darker and more beigey than mine, so I'm just gonna use my concealer so that it looks like my scalp and not like I stole somebody else's scalp. This part's pretty self-explanatory. Just pop it on there and like kind of tap it to blend it out with your finger and just try to avoid getting it in the actual hair because it's kind of hard to get out once you do that. And then more hairspray to kind of lock it in place. Okay, so just one last step. Uh, this is like my biggest wig secret. So first I'm going to wet the wig down with a uh, spray bottle, it just has water in it. Um, I'm going to focus it on the ends here because that's all we really need to worry about right now. And uh, just make sure the wig is thoroughly dampened but you don't want to soak it. Like you do not want a drippy wig, that's, that's not the plan here. But just make sure each section of hair has some water, if you know what I mean. And then I'm just combing it through. Um, it's also not great to brush a wig when it's super wet, so that's again why we're just dampening it. We're gonna put some gel in it, so we just we just want the water to be cohesive with the gel. Uh, so so don't don't get too spray happy, okay? So the gel I'm using is this Tresemme gel, um, and it, I don't know why I discovered this works, but I swear to god it's a game changer. So this gel, I like it because it doesn't get like dry and crusty or anything like a lot of gels do. The hair stays soft, um, but putting this gel in it not only is it going to help preserve the style of the wig, because I really like these waves, but it's also going to keep the hairs in place so that uh, they don't get as tangly. So, you know, with a long wig, uh, when it's synthetic especially, the hair's gonna get tangled no matter what, right? Especially in the back, um, by the nape of your neck and stuff. But this gel is just really going to help minimize that. Uh, so the hairs are staying in place and they're not getting as much movement to tangle around each other. And so I've noticed such a big difference when I get home from like work or wherever and I take off my wig. There's so many less like knots and tangles I have to deal with. You know, it might just be like a little messy because, you know, wigs get, you know, disoriented throughout the day. There's nothing you can do about that. That's the nature of the wig. But the gel helps and it, it just, it feels nice and it just, it looks nice and it, 10 out of 10. Yeah, look at her go. Look how pretty she is. I like this color. I'm getting Hannah Montana vibes. That's part of the reason why I got it because I'm bought Disney Plus and I've been watching Hannah Montana and I just missed it so much and it's my favorite show. Okay, so um, the outro song is playing so I assume that means we're done here. We just add my little bow. What a look. Yeah, I think this, this turned out really good. So the this is what I do to all my wigs when I first get them. Uh, so now you know to all the people that ask me this is this is what I do to every wig uh, Lace fronts are slightly different. I'll do a video on that at some point But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so freaking much for a thousand subscribers We did it. I never thought it would happen and here I am um, Thank you. I, I have I, I well, I have no words anyways. I'm bad at talking but Seriously, I love you so much. Have fun, be safe, look both ways before you cross the street, and I'll see you next Monday.